Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the GPCA podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, Nadia Hackinson from Tusinkrup Uda. So to start, Nadia, let's, let's get to know Nadia. Who is Nadia? And what does Tusinkrup Uda do? Firstly, thank you, Hamad. Great to be on your podcast. Thank you for Great coming. at the GPCA. Uh, I'm Nadia Hackinson. I'm the CEO of Tusinkrup Uda since 1st of May this year. Uh, I am uh, born and raised in Sweden, parents from Morocco. I'm an engineer. Uh, I've been in the energy industry prior to me joining UDE in Siemens and Siemens Energy for 18 years. And Tusenkrupp UDE is a chemical plant engineering company, okay. part of Tusenkrupp. And Tusenkrupp is a large uh, conglomerate global company that is in various industries and sectors such as steel, automotive, material services, marine systems, and of course also industrial solutions such as Tusenkrupp Uda that is part of the decarbon uh, technology segment. Okay. So for your company, I think one of the biggest pillars for the company is innovation, of course. Yes. So what is innovation in your opinion and what is the importance of innovation, especially in energy and decarbonization? So in innovation is everything. Mm. Uh, I think no company can survive without continuously innovating. Yeah. And right now in the world, we are all in a very important stage where innovation plays a really critical role to, to solve some of the biggest challenges that uh, the world is facing decarbonizing and uh, changing our entire energy infrastructure. It's a big task and it requires innovative companies that can also figure out how to scale those innovative solutions in collaboration, of course, with other companies, with academia. And yeah, without innovation as a core part of your DNA, I think a company cannot survive for 100 plus years, such as uh, Tusenkrupp Uda has. Of course, you know, if you don't innovate, your company slowly dies and just can't compete with the market. And you mentioned that your company, of course, offers these innovative solutions. So can you quickly or briefly tell us what are some of these solutions that you can offer to other companies? Absolutely. So our strong legacy is in building large-scale chemical plants and various chemicals. Ammonia, mainly for our fertilizer industry, and that's why we are also very present here and supporting GPCA, uh, but also um, ammonia for the new purpose of being a fuel uh, for maritime, for power generation, uh, to serve also in, in decarbonizing um, maritime. Uh, and uh, besides, uh, of course, ammonia, we have various activities such as methanol. We're also um, in biomass gasification. All of this also with the purpose of developing sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, but also our legacy sits in, in base chemicals, polyols, polymers that are used for everything that we use every day. Uh, and our unique um, skill set sits in both our process chemical engineering skill set with the uh, technologies and licenses that we have in combination with our EPC experience that we've also built uh, multiple plants, over 3,000 uh, wow. all around the world. What's interesting about you is you had that energy background. Yes. So you can apply that to your current job with the new biofuels, with new solutions, for example, the one you mentioned with ammonia. Correct. Yes. And in the chemical industry, what do you think is the next steps for companies to accelerate decarbonization, accelerate the decrease of using CO2 and CO2 consumption? What are companies lacking? What should they do? What are their next steps, in your opinion? Great question, Hamad. And firstly, yes, I'm very excited about the opportunity to uh, connect much closer the potential of chemical industry with energy. Of what? course, oil and gas and power generation, which is where I'm uh, coming from, uh, oil and gas is also chemicals, right? Yeah. And this is a kind of a, you know, how do we as a chemical industry, uh, A, make sure that we address our existing technologies, existing chemical plants, 
uh, although, um, let's say, a fertilizer plant does not contribute as much to CO2 as, say, um, steel companies, cement companies, uh, but we, there's so much we can do to also uh, make sure that we remove CO2, we remove NOx emissions, and make sure that biodiversity uh, for, for our agriculture is there. So, A, support with existing, um, existing plants, and second of all is really to co-create together with uh, companies in the energy sector and address energy uh, as a as a as a need and that requires of course the chemical industry to a make sure that we have people that have a, a, an experience from both fields and that we have collaborations with uh, across multiple companies and really co-develop solutions everyone comes with their piece of domain know-how uh, and uh, in certain cases it's uh, it's about figuring out what those um, um, what that ecosystem could look like. So I think third, uh, we together as an industry need to create the compelling vision of the future. Yes. I mean, where are we going? What is the end uh, result and how do we get there? How would this transition look like? Um, and, and there, of course, lies the biggest challenge right now. Yeah, this challenge is, uh, I think everyone is looking for the answer. Yeah. And it's very hard to find this answer. People are investing millions, close to billions. And as we know that even with the current investments, we need much bigger and more investment because of the research and development required, the technology, and there's so many unanswered questions. Yes. So what do you think is an incentive for a company? Let's say a company, the GCC, for example, mm -hmm. to start and focusing on decarbonization. What's the monetary incentive for them? Because you're offering that solution. But for a company, they're trying to make that money. They want a return on investment. So what is your solution? So what is your answer to that return on investment mm -hmm. over that uh, so, big capital expenditure? Yeah, yeah. It, it is a big investment. Well, um, one, I think it's a combination of um, altruistic uh, motivation, right? That I think um, companies have a certain social responsibility, a certain responsibility to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I think it goes perhaps without saying that uh, every company, especially companies who have a large influence, uh, has also the potential and responsibility to have a decarbonization agenda. Yes. So that's the altruistic side of things. The um, second uh, point is, of course, market. If there is no market, there is also no incentive mm. to, um, to develop, to invest. Um, and uh, herein lies, of course, where for this market to develop, we need a combination of um, excellent conditions such as policies that um, provide that uh, incentive yes. to um, with certain guarantees, with certain tax exemptions, with certain uh, um, assumptions about pricing, certain assumptions about carbon intensity, what is accepted, what is not, uh, so that the first movers and developers are able to really take the next step and take it to implementation. Um, but we we have to, I think for those, there are always going to be, well, what is going to be the solution? Is it hydrogen? Is it electrification? What is it going to be? And my personal view is all of it. <laughs> a mix of everything. A mix of everything, yes. right? So without a doubt, we the world needs uh, more electrification. But we also need pipelines that can transport uh, green hydrogen from, say, North Africa uh, to Europe, uh, or from, from GCC to, to Europe. We need uh, to be able to ship um, ammonia to Japan and Korea that is very so much on a, a, on a distant geography that they, we can't solve that necessarily with HVDC lines or pipeline subsea, right? Yes. Then that's where ammonia comes in as a solution, as, as a vector for us to ship 
a fuel for the ships? Yeah, a fuel for the ship uh, and a fuel because we can also crack it to hydrogen. And that's a coming back to innovation, something very uh, critical that uh, the capability of ammonia cracking is established. We're working uh, very diligently on this so that we can transfer it back to hydrogen and use hydrogen then as uh, in the various industries and applications. But when it comes to your company, it's 2025, we're almost done with 2024. Mm -hmm. What is the plan for the company? What is the vision for next year? So the vision for us is to become one of the best-in-class leaders when it comes to chemical plants engineering and to make a real significant impact for low-carbon and green fuels while also addressing very much what we can do, not just from a future development perspective with innovation and R&D, but the here and now, that there is so much we can do with existing technology. And we want to serve the market, serve our customers. Um, and yeah, we want to be best in class. We are, we are going to grow. Um, we are going to be closer to our markets, to our customers, so that we really understand what is required um, and support with the skill set that we have. Nadia, yes. you are a very influential figure. You're a female CEO uh, in this industry. That title is, we don't see a female CEOs a lot. No. So you're an inspiration to all the women engineers. So how important is inclusivity and diversity in your company? For me, this is uh, really the, one of the most important aspects when you build a team. Yes. You must have diverse teams. And why? Well, A, you want to be relatable. If you do global business, right, then you have to be relatable. People need to see that they are represented. And then you need to represent the global community. And uh, that's how I see it. We're in an international um, business. I love the global aspect of doing business. I love diversity. I think the best results come when you have diverse teams. And both in terms of gender diversity, cultural, geographical, but also diversity in ways of thinking. And leading uh, diverse teams, of course, it's not always easy. Uh, but when when you see the results that you can achieve through cross cultural and diverse teams, it's it's very motivational for me. What do you think of the GPCA forum? Is this the first time you're joining us? Yes. Is this going to be your last time? I hope no. not. Well, I was I was already thinking and taking a note of the date for next year, and I, it's a great platform. You know, for me, this platform is. Everyone is here that I want to meet, that I that I'm that I see as my customer, my partner, my future partner. Everyone is here, and exchanging both on the specific developments uh, as well as just a, an exchange on how do we see the market and how do we see this challenge. This alignment is very important because only through platforms like this can we progress. And I think everyone leaves this um, uh, forum with uh, not only new connections, but uh, inspiration. New ideas. New ideas and new collaborations. And, of course, tasks to be done uh, that are, of course, going to help shape the future. All right. Thank you, Nadia. And we have to see you next year because it's going to be in Bahrain, my home country. It's so be there. You have to come. Of course. I'm <laughs> yes. looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Have thank fun. you again, Nadia, for your time. And thank you to the listeners. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of the GPCA um, podcast. And inshallah, we're going to see you in the next episode. Thank you.